Hello and welcome back. So this is a video from FYBSC syllabus which has some points to be discussed on beneficial and harmful effects of microorganisms. So for or under environmental microbiology you get some of these points as beneficial effect of microbes and harmful effects of microbes. So today we will be discussing some beneficial effects like sewage treatment and bioremediation and harmful effects like eutrophication and red tie, tide. Okay, so these are the examples and you get some uh, questions on this topic or you may get a short note just on say um, harmful effects of microorganism on environment so you can give these two examples that is eutrophication and red tide and uh, for beneficial effects you can give examples of sewage treatment and bioremediation okay so let's start with this video for first year students this is the video series which i am working on so i will be uploading these videos um, so do check my playlist for FIBSC and you can watch these videos and prepare for yourself. Now first is about harmful effects that is eutrophication. So most of you must have known or you must have uh, heard of this term and you know about it uh, as in you know, the higher grades also eutrophication is taught. So eutrophication is the condition of a gradual increase in the concentration of nutrients like phosphorus, nitrogen and other plant nutrients in the water body resulting into the excessive plant and algal growth in the uh, water bodies say like lakes or uh, ponds where the water is stagnant. Okay, So eutrophication is the condition of gradual increase of concentration of all these nutrients which leads to the um, higher growth of some microbial um, isolates okay so eutrophication is it is a widespread challenge which is faced by all the freshwater systems it is a natural process okay that occurs in different water sources over centuries but due to some human activities it has also got accelerated and the process has increased the rate of uh, formation of eutrophication has increased and the uh, water bodies they are getting contaminated the condition arises as to the productivity or fertility of aquatic ecosystem increase increases due to the rise of organic material that can be broken down into simpler usable nutrients okay the effect of eutrophication of water sources is the formation of blooms okay so what are the formation of blooms so there is some algal growth or say some uh, small phytoplanktons that means some small small organisms which uh, usually dwell in the water systems only they start growing at the higher rates okay and they cover the entire surface um, of your water body the effect of eutrophication of water uh, resources is formation of blooms of fall smelling phytoplanktons and these microorganisms they reduce water clarity and might degrade the water quality as well the growth of such blooms it disturbs the light penetration and destroys the growth of plants in the coastal zones as well now see this is what we are studying here so this is eutrophication so this is how all the microbes or the uh, blooms that we are talking about the bloom or the growth of microbe or algal or the small phytoplanktons the growth is on the surface of the water so what happens it covers the surface of water and this leads to the poor sunlight penetration into the water and that results in the death of the uh, water uh, based animals okay even say fish or the small uh, plants which are growing underwater they don't get sufficient sunlight and thus they die so eutrophic water resources they usually harbor fewer large animals like fishes and birds when compared to non eutrophic waters so that is the reason as they don't get enough oxygen uh, which is dissolved in the water and even they get no sunlight the most harmful consequences of eutrophication is destruction of water quality and loss of ecological biodiversity the excess of nutrients in the water sources usually results due to the runoff from the land that carries the product from terrestrial ecosystem to the sources so the best example is the runoff from land for this the example i can give is of um, 
excessive fertilizers which are getting washed off from the agriculture or the fields or the farms okay so for decades uh, eutrophication has been considered an irreversible process but for the last few years eutrophication in several lakes has been reversed by managing both the human nutrient emission and cut off the uh, cutting off the nutrient load of the source other sources the growth of algal blooms like other plants it requires nutrients of certain ratio that are different from the uh, natural concentration and that's the reason if that's the reason if the concentrations are high the algal blooms they start growing and flourishing very fast okay so some of the factors are like first the concentrated animal feeding operations now concentrated animal feeding operations are agricultural practices where a large number of animals are confined to a certain area for a certain period of time in order to increase the productivity okay and the quality uh, of the animals now the operations like this produces millions of tons of manure each year and all of these eventually find their way into water resources so concentrated animal feeding is um it is actually a agricultural practice where large number of animals they are um taken or they are placed at a particular area and they are fed there they are confined to that particular area only just to increase their quality and productivity okay and this results into tons of manure and that is just thrown away into the water resources so it also increases the uh, nutrient concentration in the water bodies now excessive use of fertilizers in the farm so this is very easy example for you to remember now excessive use of fertilizers what happens when it rains or when uh, fields are watered what happens the excessive fertilizers they are drained out uh, from the fields and the uh, nutrients they are run off to or they flow away with the water to the nearby water system okay so fertilizers used on land near water resources eventually are ultimately deposited into water resources during rain or other natural processes the runoffs from the different areas eventually make their way into lakes rivers oceans which increases the nutrient availability of that particular water resources now sewage and industrial water discharge in many developing countries household sewage as well as industrial discharge are they are released into water resources like lakes ponds and rivers and the wastewater entering from different uh, resources it tends to have high amounts of chemical nutrients and thus it stimulates the dense growth of algal blooms in such resources okay so why eutrophication is harmful uh, effect of microbes you must have now understood okay so get your concepts clear read twice or watch my videos uh, two three times so that you get your concept clear okay this is very easy topic for you to remember and write your answer okay now next is harmful effect that is red tide now the eutrophication is mainly found in uh, or yes it is observed in fresh water bodies but red tide is from oceans okay it is observed in oceans or marine environment so it is a marine environmental event where uh, protest including algae and uh, dinoflagellates they grow through the tremendous growth period called the bloom or an algal bloom okay and in two to three weeks of period it is possible for each algal cell to produce one million daughter cells so that's the reason why uh, these algal blooms they are formed in very short period of time okay if they have uh, favorable conditions and high concentration of nutrients present in the water system they flourish in very short period of time okay and that's the reason why these are considered as harmful effects okay now red tide has many devastating effects on the ocean ecosystem one of which is creation of dead zones okay now dead zones are created when the algal or the algae responsible for red tide they start to die okay now what happens the algae's uh, decaying process when the cells they die the decaying process consumes the oxygen in the ocean which causes the fish and other sea creatures to die in large numbers now today scientists prefer to use the term harmful algal blooms rather than red tide because it more because it's more accurately describes the process or the phenomena okay now don't get confused here why 
the dead zone is very harmful because in dead zone what happens the algal cells which die they require uh, more oxygen for the decaying process okay and that's the reason the oxygen concentration falls down and it causes the fish and other sea creatures to die so that is the reason why it is known as red tide or uh, dead zone okay so this is how it looks you can see this is the um, algal uh, growth and how it looks it looks like a red tide that's the reason why this particular phenomenon is known as red tide then about the beneficial effect so sewage treatment so water uh, or the waste water can be detrimental to the environment if it is left untreated so thanks to microorganisms because we can use them to treat the waste water itself now the role of microorganisms in the waste water treatment it helps to treat and purify waste water and make it less harmful to the environment how because microbes they have special ability to decay or degrade particular um, waste or say pollutants okay so we can use both aerobic and anaerobic bacteria and they play an important role in sewage treatment so first about aerobic bacteria so aerobic bacteria they are mostly used in new treatment plants in uh, what is known as aerated environment okay so aerated environment is where uh, we use oxygen we supply oxygen okay and we keep the environment or the water which has to be treated aerated okay so that's the reason we are uh, in the, uh, we are supplying oxygen so that's the reason it is known as aerated environment so these bacterium they use the free oxygen within the water to degrade the pollutants in the waste water and then convert it into the energy and that it can be used for their growth and reproduction for this type of bacteria to be used correctly it must have oxygen added mechanically okay so that's the reason we are supplying oxygen externally and that's the reason there are aerated plants so this will ensure that the bacteria are able to do their job correctly and continue to grow and reproduce on its food source okay the next is about anaerobic bacteria so anaerobic bacteria are one which grow without oxygen aerobic are one which required oxygen so anaerobic bacteria are one which don't require the oxygen so in case of water treatment waste water treatment on a no normal basis we need to maintain this particular parameter so the main role of these bacteria in sewage treatment is to reduce the volume of sludge sludge is the uh, waste that uh, gets settled when the water is kept untreated and undisturbed okay so the volume of sludge uh it the anaerobic bacteria they have to reduce the volume of sludge and produce the methane gas from it so that's their role like you can um, imagine like biogas plant okay so they are used as they produce the methane gas and if it is cleaned and handled properly then it can be used as an alternative energy source so this is a huge benefit considering the already high waste high what uh, waste water treatment energy consumption levels so um, for the uh, waste water treatment plant to run efficiently under uh, low cost this particular methane gas which is produced by anaerobic bacteria on degradation of the sludge you can use that for your water treatment plant to run okay and you can cut your cost so this is the another benefit now unlike aerobic bacteria this type of bacteria they are able to get more than uh, more than enough oxygen from its food sources and will not require adding oxygen to help to do this job okay so phosphorus removal from the waste water is another benefit of anaerobic microbes used in the sewage treatment so this is very short i am describing about anaerobic and aerobic bacteria here but just to write a short note on what are the beneficial uh, effects of microbes you can write a sewage treatment write about sewage treatment plant okay now another bio, beneficial effect is bioremediation so what is bioremediation so bioremediation is a branch of biotechnology that employs the use of living microorganisms like uh, fungi and bacteria in the removal of contaminants like pollutants and other toxins from soil water and other environments okay so we need to treat our natural uh, sites like 
soil or water and for that we don't want to interfere with the chemicals okay or some heavy machinery so what we do we use living microorganisms okay like fungi and bacteria and they have the ability to uh, degrade and convert some uh, complex substances to the simpler one so we are using that particular ability of microbes to clean some pollutants and toxins okay so that is bioremediation now bioremediation is used to clean up oil spills and contaminated groundwaters as well so it is considered as a safe and sustainable technology at israel at as it relies on the action of microbes most of the indigenous microbes that means the one which are present uh, at that particular point or the site okay so indigenous microbes they have the ability to successfully bring up the environmental restoration via oxidizing mobilizing and transforming the contaminants so you can use those particular microbes you can culture them culture them on large scale and then you can inoculate those particular microbes to that particular uh, site and they can work now this particular process it requires time this is not a process that can quickly um, clean the particular site in say one or two days this is a very long process lengthy process which like requires good amount of time okay so it aims to reduce and bring down pollutants levels up to the undetectable and non toxic or acceptable levels okay so there is no 100% of bioremediation but you can reduce the levels up to undetectable or say non toxic or till the acceptable levels okay the uh, limits which are set by the regulatory agencies so that's the way bioremediation works now microorganisms like bacteria and fungi uh, are the main role players when it comes to the executing the process of bioremediation bacteria are the most crucial microbes in this process as they break down the waste into nutrients and organic matter and efficiency of the bioremediation is never 100% in cleaning the contaminants okay so bacteria can easily digest contaminants like chlorinated pesticides or clean oil spills but microorganisms they fail they fail to destroy some heavy metals like lead and cadmium okay so there are some advantages there are some disadvantages of bioremediation but it is a beneficial effect as we can use microbes for cleaning up the pollutants and toxins okay not till 100% but at least to the levels of undetectable and acceptable levels okay so this was about uh, beneficial effects and harmful effects of microbes two two examples i have discussed here so i hope this particular video is helpful to you all if you have some questions about some terms then do uh, mention those your, those questions in the comment box or if you want some videos on other topics then also mention those topics in comment box i will try to upload the video as soon as possible okay do like my videos do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you